Hey guys, it's Joel. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about emotion today because uh, it's something that I continue to see coming up and uh, because of COVID, but also just because of life, right? So I want to talk about negative emotions. Um, this is, you know, I'm angry, I'm sad, or I'm afraid. Because these are the big three of the negative emotions. It's how our amygdala handles that fight or flight energy that's telling us something's wrong with the world, something's not right, and our, ener our uh, energy is going up. And then the way that we kind of feel these emotions and experience them has to do with how our beliefs about ourself and how our beliefs about the world work. And they're kind of telling us what to do with that feeling that something's wrong with the world. So, um, you know, the first way, sadness. Sadness is the most adaptable to feel. It's kind of the hardest to feel because you're, you're having to be in touch with a vulnerable child. You're having to sit with your own hurt. You're having to sit with your own ability to have been damaged and be in touch with that. And if you're able to feel that, it's not fun, but it is probably the harder of those to feel. You know, anger is telling you that something has, uh, something has broken a rule or that something has violated a boundary. You know, uh, rules are your expectations for how others behave. So some rules are okay, like I, I want my kids to behave or I want my spouse not to cheat on me. Okay, that, that's fine. But too many rules are going to put you in anger management. Too many rules are like, don't be 10 minutes late, look me in the eye when you're talking to me, don't cut me off in traffic, you're too close to the stop sign, you need to vote the same way I vote, you need to believe the same way I believe, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're going to end up in anger management if that's what's going on. Um, the beliefs that you, or the boundaries are your uh, expectations for how people interact with you. So, you know, knock before you come in my house. It's my job to do this, but not that. You know, don't tell my kids what to do. Those are all boundaries. So when we're in touch with anger, when we're in touch with that emotion, we can feel it here. We're able to just be assertive. That energy is just being assertive. It's saying, I don't want you to do that. Um, this is how I expect you to interact with me. If we don't feel like we can do that because maybe a person outranks us or um, they have some sort of fiduciary power over us or uh, we have learned that we're not allowed to do that, then what happens is we don't notice it until it's up here and then it's just rage. So, I mean, one of the a lot of the work that I do with anger is catching it in the body and in your mind when it's right here and then being able to use it before it's up there. Um, when you don't feel like you have the ability to do that, you don't have the ability to enforce any control over your world, you're, you're going to just feel fear, right? So fear is this feeling of vulnerability, that something's wrong and I can't do anything about it, I'm in danger and I don't think I can protect myself, and it's kind of the least adaptable feeling to feel. When some of these things get turned off, um, the, they kind of slide down that ramp, right? So if there's a rule in your family of origin that's like, you can't be sad. Men can't be sad. Um, you know, don't cry or I'll give you something to cry about. Real men don't cry. Other people have uh, way worse than you. So it's weakness or narcissism to, to feel your emotion. If that's maybe a rule that you tell yourself or that your family told you, then you don't have access to that sad feeling. And when you feel it, it's going to come out as anger, right? And this is like when your dog dies and then you're punching holes in the wall. You're not really angry there. But people who don't learn that they can express sadness, or they learn that that's against the rules, when they feel it, it's going to slide down that ramp and become anger. So I do a lot of work with this, because I find it works faster than that kind of CBT, ABC system of these are your beliefs, because we can just turn this emotion back on. You have access to it. You have a right to feel sad. It's okay. You're not even really angry all the time. Sometimes you are. But a lot of the time that anger's coming out, it's because you're sad. Now, when we don't have the ability to feel angry, if anger is something that's turned off, maybe we learn, you know, children should be seen and not heard, women aren't allowed to talk in the South, you can't be assertive, it doesn't matter what you think, other people are smarter than you, they get to decide the rules, then you don't think you have the ability to assert rules or boundaries. So that's turned off, and it becomes fear. And so I see patients come in all the time that are just having overwhelming panic, overwhelming uh you know feelings of t uh, terror uh dissociation a lot of the time comes out this way and there's you know ways that i have as a trauma therapist to work with panic and dissociation but sometimes when it's an emotional root like this it's much easier to just turn anger back on and then that stuff goes away because the reason that you're feeling terrified every single time you're at your mother's house or she's around 
It's because you don't think you have any ability to say, these are the rules for my house, or you can't talk to me this way, I'm an adult, or, you know, I don't really like the way that you treat me. Or not go over there at all. You feel like you have to. Um, or every single time you're starting to dissociate is when you feel like you're not able to control the world. You're just walking around hoping that the world doesn't hurt you. And when you learn, oh, I actually have the ability within me to be appropriately assertive, to set rules and boundaries for myself, that just goes away. Um, because you weren't really feeling afraid there. You're really feeling angry. Um, but you're not in touch with that. You've learned not to feel it. So anyway, that's my uh, kind of observation about the way that we handle those big three negative emotions. Um, you know, this is part one. I'm going to go into ways that we can maybe look at emotion a little bit more in part two. So stick around for that, and I will see you in just a second. If 